Now let's take a look at listing your bundle on Amazon. Now this is really no different to making a regular listing, but there are a couple of things that might be a little bit confusing for you. So first of all, you will need a UPC. So you will need to purchase a UPC. So you know where to get that from already from earlier on in the course. So you can get from speedy barcodes or ease UPC. And that is on the handout, the download for the lecture UPC codes and more. So you need a UPC code to create the listing. Now the UPC must also be on the outside of the bundle packaging or the FNSKU. So one or the other must be on the outside of the bundle packaging before you send it to Amazon FBA. Any barcodes at all, so any UPCs or any kind of barcodes that happen to be on the components, they should be covered up. Now the reason for that is that you do not want them being accidentally scanned. Now, it really depends on your packaging, but if you are poly bagging, for example, and there's a strong possibility that the scanner, when it's scanning the UPC code on the outside of your package, so on the outside of your bundle packaging, that it may possibly pick up a code from a component inside the bundle. You don't want that to happen. So if there's a possibility of that happening, make sure that you cover up any barcodes on the components. If you're packaging in a box, so in for cardboard box, for example, then it wouldn't be necessary. Now, which category do you list a bundle in? So you've got a number of items in a bundle. Well, basically you can only list in one category. So you can only list as if you are listing one item. So even though you have a bundle with multiple items inside, you need to choose one item as the main item and list that item. So basically for here, this will be this foam roller for this bundle here. And for this bundle here, it's a little more difficult because well, it's not so obvious what the main component would be, but you've just got to choose something. And in this case, if I was listing the scrapbooking set, the starter kit for scrapbooking, I would probably list it under stickers. So I would list it under scrapbooking stickers. So in the arts and crafts category, scrapbooking and then stickers. So that would make sense. What if your bundle has components from more than one category. Well, you still need to choose a component of that bundle and list it in that particular category. So here, for example, the components of this bundle, we've got components that are in the kitchen and dining category, but also if you are listing this here on its own, you wouldn't list it in kitchen and dining because these are stickers and pencils, that kind of thing. So in this case, we need to choose one of the categories. So we choose one category, we choose kitchen and dining. It makes more sense. So we would list in the kitchen and dining category and we would probably list under, as if we were listing this item here, this food flask. So that's what you would do. So you just go ahead to add a product and create a new product and then you go ahead and you just click through until you find your actual subcategory. So in this case, if I was looking to list that sports bundle that we looked at with the foam roller and the exercise bands and the ebook, I would be listing under sporting goods and then I would click through until I found the right subcategory for that particular product because I will be looking to find something that would be a foam roller. So that will probably go on to exercise equipment, maybe core training equipment or something like that. I click through until I found the right subcategory. And everything else is the same. So basically it's all the same as you have already seen in the earlier lectures. So when you're adding your listing here and setting it all up, nothing is different. Okay, now let's just quickly consolidate here about the 
presentation of your bundle, the listing setup, because these are things that are very important. Your images, make them the best they can be. You do need to put the extra effort in for bundles, but I mean, it can pay off big time because if you have a winning bundle that's making multiple sales, maybe a few sales a day on a regular basis, that bundle can go on to make you tens of thousands of dollars over time. So it is worth the extra effort. Make your images the best they can be. It has been proven that images can make a difference to sales of as much of a thousand percent, which means it, good images can increase your sales by tenfold. And conversely, bad images can reduce your sales dramatically as well. The title, make sure you've included the main keywords and try and be creative with your title. Even if you've got a bundle of generic components, try and come up with a, a creative name for your bundle because that way you're going to give it some personality. Always include the word set or kit or pack or whatever is relevant to your bundle in the title, making sure that people know exactly what they're getting. This is a bundle and not just an individual product. Even though you have the main image showing there with all the components on it, still make sure you've included that word somewhere in the title, whichever word is relevant to your bundle. The bullet points. Be sure to state the benefits as well as the features. Try and paint pictures with your words because that's what sells. In the description, list the components. It's a really good idea to do that. So have a list of the components in your bundle going down in a list so it's easy for customers to scan through and see exactly what they're getting. And make sure that the text of your description is formatted, not just a big block of text. Now with your back end keywords, so when you're adding your keywords, you're adding your search terms in the add a listing section in Seller Central, include keywords for all the components and include any keywords you've not used on the listing page. You don't need to double up. Try and use the space wisely and adding keywords, including keywords for all the components in your bundle and make sure that any bundle words that you haven't actually got in your title or bullet points or anything like that, make sure they are also in the back end keywords. So things like pack, package, bundle. Customers don't actually search very often on the search term bundle. They're more likely to search for gift set, pack, package, starter kit, kit, that kind of thing. But you can still add it there if you have space. Now your packaging, make the extra effort. Now this is applicable to gift packages and themed bundles. It's not so applicable to things like convenience bundles. As long as they're neatly packaged, that's all that matters there. But for anything that could be potentially given as a gift, make the extra effort because that's going to make all the difference. It will raise the perceived value of your bundle will allow you to charge more. So spending that little bit extra on packaging, don't think on that as eating away at your profits because in fact, you can increase the price of your bundle because of that packaging. All right, now let's just take a quick look at getting the sales rolling. Now we have covered this here already in the course, but let's just touch on a couple of things and a couple of extra things as well that I'm not going to go into detail about. It's beyond the scope of this course, but I'm going to touch on it and then it's up to you if you want to pursue it further. Well, first of all, though, of course, we have sponsored ads and that should be a part of your strategy when getting your bundles going, creating coupons and perhaps going to some of the deal and discount sites on Facebook or creating a sale and publicizing that on Retail Me Not, for example. So sponsored ads and maybe coupons as well, but sponsored ads should definitely be part of your strategy for kicking off your bundle. And we have these off Amazon sources as well. The bulk of your traffic will always come from Amazon no matter what, but there are places off of Amazon that are really good for e-commerce. So in other words, for retail sales, online retail sales, 
One of those is Pinterest, the other is YouTube, and of course we have Facebook. Now Facebook, only if you've got an existing page, an existing presence on there, otherwise it would take, you know, a little while to get that going. But websites like Pinterest and YouTube, you can actually get a very quick result from these two. Now, these are beyond the scope of this course. So let me just introduce them to you. And then, as I say, you can decide if you want to take this further or not. But on Pinterest, just very briefly to outline what you would do is you would register your account on Pinterest. You would create a board on Pinterest for your niche, add content to the board, and then pin your bundle directly from your Amazon listing page. So where do you get content for your Pinterest board? Well, other pins on Pinterest are related to your niche and from around the internet. You can also create infographics for free on Canva. It's actually very easy to do because they provide the templates. And what I have done here in the PDF downloads for this section, I have given you a direct link there to go to check out the tutorials on how to do that. There's no point me making a tutorial. I was thinking about it, but since the tutorials are already there on Canva and they're very good, then you might as well learn directly from Canva. Now that's completely free and it's as I say, it's easy to do. Once you get the hang of it, you can be creating these in a matter of a few minutes. And the other place where you can get a quick result is YouTube. So briefly there, you would register an account on YouTube. You would create a channel, make a simple video and upload it along with a title and a link going back to your Amazon listing and of course a description. Now the description could be taken straight from your Amazon listing page and just pasted into the description field on YouTube. So how to make a simple video? Well, there are various online tools to allow you to do this. There's Animoto, but I think that's a paid now. I don't think it's free. Windows Movie Maker, if you have Windows, if you use Windows. And Lumen5 is one that I use myself as well. I've been using this quite a bit. It's relatively new, I think, actually, and it's free as well. So you can make a short video for free. It's very easy to use. And what should your video be about? Well, let me tell you, the most popular videos are review videos. So if you use the word review in the title, these get lots and lots of views on YouTube and unboxing or unpacking the bundle. So if you can video yourself unpacking the bundle, or if you just feel that you are hopeless at this and you can't do this, you could get someone else to do it for you. But it does seem like a little bit of an expense for a new bundle where you're not too sure at that stage whether or not this is going to be a real winning bundle or not. And you don't know whether you want to keep going with the bundle. So anyway, that's about as far as I can go when it comes to external traffic sources in this course, because as I said, it's beyond the scope of this particular course. All right. Well, I hope this section on bundling has been either very helpful to you or it's opened your eyes to some more opportunities and possibilities, perhaps for a little bit in the future when you've already got some experience. Saying that, you could definitely do this right out of the gate without having any selling experience if you wanted to. But I know that this is a little bit more advanced. It does require more effort. It may even possibly require you to have more available funds to start off with than going down the individual product route. But the option is here for you, whether it's for now or for the future. All right, speak to you soon.